Hello, welcome to this last video in this set of four videos on the dot product. We're looking at applications now of the dot product. And it turns out that you can use the dot product to help you figure out a different way of naming your vector. You could actually name your vector by the angle that it makes with each of the coordinate axes. Each of the coordinate axes have, has, a, has a unit vector on it. And that unit vector along the x-axis is the i, the vector i. The unit vector along the y-axis is j. The unit vector along the z-axis is k. The angle you make with i, j, and k can be enough to define your vector. They're called direction angles. Let's call the, um, the angle that you make with i, let's call that alpha. The angle that you make with j, let's call that beta. And the angle that you make with k, Let's call that gamma. Let's see if we can figure this out. We know the vectors i, j, and k. And let's say generically our vector is v1, v2, v3. Remember the formula for the angle between two vectors? It's that the cosine of that angle is equal to the fraction of the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes. So, if we're going to find the angle that we make with i, alpha, well, we know that magnitude of i is 1. We know that um, the component form of i is 1, 0, 0. So when it comes to the dot product that we make with i, two of those zero out, and we just get the first component, we get v1. And so the cosine of the angle between V and I is V1 over mag V. The cosine of the angle that you make with J is V2 over mag V. And the cosine that you make with the angle uh, with the vector K is V3 over mag V. By the way, the dot product works in the numerator, and by the way, the denominator um, has a unit vector in it. So one of those uh, two parts of that product is a 1. And so these then become the cosine of these angles from above. Cosine of alpha, v1 over mag v. Cosine of beta, v2 over mag v. Cosine of gamma, v3 over mag v. Those should look familiar, actually. Remember how we find the unit vector that points in the same direction as a vector? These guys are actually the components of the unit vector that points in the same direction as V. All right, so we can use that to, to, to actually describe the vector, what angle it makes with each of the coordinate axes or each of the standard unit vectors. Um, a physics application is going to be work. The work done by a force can be calculated using the dot product. When a constant force moves an object a distance d units in the same direction as the object, then to find that work done, you just take the magnitude of the force and you multiply by the distance that you moved it. Displacement officially should be the right word for that. That's if it's acting along the line of motion, pushing from behind. But what if you have that force acting at an angle to the point of application? So if that constant force is applied to a body acting at an angle, but the motion is still going along in, in a direction of motion, then work can end up being described using a dot product. Um, we have to take into account the cosine of the angle that you apply the force at. And so we have like a right triangle that happens with the, with the force and the displacement vector. The angle between them is theta and the, basically we have to find the projection, honestly, of the force on to the displacement vector. What part of the force is acting along the lines of motion? And so work then can be found by the magnitude of the force 
times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. D is your displacement vector. And those are the individual parts of the dot product. Remember how we have uh, the dot product between two vectors can be found by finding the product of the magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them. So work is a dot product between two vectors, the displacement vector and the force vector. All right, so here's a classic problem. You have a toy wagon and you're gonna pull the handle at an angle, applying a certain amount of force on the handle. What's the work done? In dragging this wagon or pulling this wagon 50 feet. If you're gonna do it at a 20 degree angle. Now without a calculator, we're just gonna get an expression for it. And we can go to a calculator and get a feel for what the number is. But um, yeah, you can just plug into the formula, honestly. You have the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. Or you could set it up with vectors. We could actually have the component form of the force vector. The I component of it is the magnitude of the force times the cosine of the angle, and the J component is the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle. What's the displacement vector? It's gonna be zero in J, and it's going to be 50 in I. You're going to move it 50 feet. You're going to, that's the dis displacement. You're going to move the wagon 50 feet. So just do the dot product between these two vectors and you'll have the work. And you'll see that from the formula, we'll have 50 times 25 times the cosine of 20 degrees. The other guy gets multiplied by zero, the sine of 20. And that's it. That's the expression for it. Now, if you go to a calculator, you can plug that in. The units you'll be getting would be foot pounds. The units here are feet and pounds, right? And that's a unit for work. Joules is also a unit for work if you wanted to get a converter and find out what the equivalent um, number of joules that is. Um, but there, there you have it. Two applications of the dot product. The dot product is associated with the angle between two vectors. It's associated with the projection vector. We could find the direction cosines of a vector we could find work done by a force. This ends the dot product series. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking in for these four videos. Um, please uh, comment down below, like and subscribe. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, and we're on to the cross product next. Thank you. See you in the next video.